Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. Just wanted to give you a bit of an update on how this SIMF amplifier build has been going. It's been a couple of months since I've posted anything on this. Uh, I'm also going to test the speaker protection circuit in this video. But yeah, I've just been gathering together the parts that I need to finish this thing off for this rather enormous case. I need to make sure everything's actually going to physically fit before I start, you know, drilling holes and hacking things or else I'll discover things won't fit quite the way I want them to. Um, so the plan was to go with this dual monoblock amplifier, so separate power supplies. So I've got two transformers. I'm still not quite sure at this stage just exactly how I'm going to mount them. Um, I've ordered some steel cases to go over the top of these transformers. They haven't arrived yet. So when those cases arrive, I'll be able to decide for sure. But my initial um, calculations based on the dimensions of the cases is, is that they won't actually fit um, both on this bottom deck. Now this, um, this is the Disapante case from DIY Audio Shop. There is actually a deeper version, but I mean this thing's already enormous. It's 5U tall, which I did to allow me to mount the boards like this. But if I went with the deeper version, this thing would just be utterly astronomically huge. So I didn't really want to do that. So these transformers, they are magnetically screened. Um, but I just like the idea of having them inside a, uh, a steel case just for, for better noise reduction. So we'll see how we go when those um, cans turn up. But I have got some extra riser panels, so the worst case scenario if I have to is I can actually like put a put a riser panel in above here and mount stack the power supplies on top of one another. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I'd be really interested to hear your comments if, if you've got any suggestions uh, as to what the best way might be to go um, about how to build this. So yeah, there's the each the power supply for each channel will have one transformer, a um, bridge rectifier, which will be bolted straight to the chassis, and then our um, capacitors. We've got these Kemet, Kemet 10,000 mic 100 volt D, DC capacitors for our voltage rails. Voltage rails should probably be about 50 volts, I think it's going to be, something like that. So the other aspect is, as I've got these... Um, voltage these DC protection boards that Harrison sent me also from modular design systems Harrison was the one who gave me these boards these amplifier boards also came with these um, DC protection boards and they give you a little delay on your speakers as well on startup so they need to be mounted in there these um, cases from DIY audio shop come with all sorts of bits and pieces and options so there's like these uh, riser panels and then there's holes mounted in the front panel so there's holes down uh, where are they there they are there there's some holes right there that this bolts to so why don't I just show you how that goes in so that will sit just there like that and the idea of this is that it will also give me some um, screening from the power supply, keep the audio stages like separated with this great big piece of metal and hopefully that will help and um, yeah obviously also it gives me somewhere to mount these circuit boards so the only trick is is that these are all like on a, a 10 millimeter grid these holes and so it works fine if you're buying all your circuit boards from DIY Audio Shop because their hole spacing is all designed to work with this stuff but in this case that's not where these have come from. So um, fortunately, three of these holes on this board are on a 10 millimeter grill grid. The first, fourth one is not, so I just put in a, a spacer just to, um, just to hold the board up off, but it's not gonna go anywhere. And then this also needs uh, 12 volts DC to operate the relays and so on. So I got this little off AliExpress. I think this thing was like less than a dollar. Um, so I bought like a panel's worth of them. But the components in it look like they're really, really cheap. So I actually 
um, changed out all of the capacitors because I just didn't like the look of them. They looked too cheap. So I had some Panasonics lying in my junk box that I popped those in there. Um, so that provides 12 volts DC and it'll be powered off. There's a, there's a secondary tap on the transformers that gives me, I think it's about 16 volts AC or something like that. There's a bridge rectifier on here, so that'll make my 12 volts DC. So, and again, because I've got um, two, two transformers, then everything is, is fully isolated, you know, not even commenting up the 12 volt DC to, because there's two protection boards, obviously. Even they won't have a common 12 volts DC. So the left and the right channel will completely be isolated from one another in every way. The only thing that will be common to them is the mains input and the chassis, and that's it. So I really like that idea. So let's now give this um, protection board a bit of a test. Okay, so here we are hooked up. So basically, this is the uh, amplifier speaker output here. So I'm simulating putting DC voltage with my PS503 onto that. This here is the 12 volts in from the uh, regulator wall, which is on the other side. I'm feeding that with the uh, PS501, giving that 16 volts DC. And then that is just strapped over to here, which in the actual amplifier, this would be the amplifier power supply rail, basically as a reference. So turn on the TM5006. Apologize about the fan noise. So if I put my 12 volts DC on, so there was the delay, and then the relay kicked in. So if I turn the output on, we've got no volts coming out of this yet, but if I just slowly crank up the volts, There we go, about 1.4 volts, the relay drops out and there it comes back in. So yeah, about 1.4 volts, it looks like is the, the threshold voltage. Um, the data sheet doesn't say what the threshold voltage is supposed to be. So I guess that's about right. But yeah, that seems to work quite well. So we'll call that a success. Um, I've got to build up the, the, the board for the other channel, um, which shouldn't be too difficult. But yeah, so now it's just a case of waiting for those uh, housings for the transformers to arrive and then coming up with a plan for final assembly of this thing. I hope you did enjoy watching this video. You might like to check out my other channel, Watch Out, which is all about watchmaking. Please do like, subscribe and share. I love to read your comments and I really look forward to seeing you in the next part of this video series on this Symef amplifier build. Bye for now.